The story goes, Bob Taylor was in his office where he had three terminals, each connected to a different network. Now the acting director of the Information Processing Techniques office at DARPA, Taylor wondered, what would it take to connect to all three networks using the same terminal? This question would lead to the creation of the first integrated computer network known as the ARPANET. DARPA, initially called ARPA, was a product of the Cold War. It was a time ripe with tension as the arms race escalated between the United States and the Soviet Union. With the successful launch of the first man-made satellite into Earth's orbit by the Soviets, the U.S. reacted with large investments in research in areas of science and technology. It was from this influx of cash that ARPA was born. But as ARPA was getting ready to take on the task at hand, a large portion of his budget and projects were redirected to another agency, NASA. ARPA soon found itself needing to reassess its goals. Still young, the agency began to set its eyes on projects that were deemed too high risk by others, but carried the potential for high gains. This new Mavic approach was attractive to certain scientists, one of whom was JCR Licklider. JCR Licklider, a psychologist turned computer scientist, was intrigued by the idea of the computer becoming a part of everyday life. At ARPA, he wrote memorandums about future computer networks where information can be readily accessed and shared among users. These writings inspired Bob Taylor, who would join the agency shortly after Licklider had left. Taylor took his idea to his boss at ARPA and received a go-ahead to build the first integrated computer network, dubbed the ARPANET project. Up until now, computer networks were desperate, meaning it was virtually impossible for a device on one network to communicate with a device in another network. This was the goal of the ARPANET's team, create a way to join all these networks into one homogeneous system. The plan they settled on was to connect each network using what are called interface message processors or IMPs. The IMPs will handle traffic leaving and entering the network. Today, these IMPs can be viewed as the ancestors of modern day routers. It was also decided to use a new communication concept known as packet switching, invented by Paul Byron and Donald Davis. Packet switching came from the need to have a more robust communication system where if a portion of the network goes offline, the system will continue to function. Initially, four nodes were selected for the ARPANET, each installed with its own IMP. On October 29, 1969, the ARPANET came online for the first time. In the following years, the network would grow, adding more and more nodes. Soon, it was spanning the continental United States, and eventually it would reach as far as Europe and Hawaii. New technologies like email began to emerge from the ARPANET, and soon users from various backgrounds wanted to get online. But saddled with the restrictions of a government-funded project, the ARPANET had to take a step back to more open platforms like the Internet. In 1990, after two decades in operation, the ARPANET was slated to be decommissioned. By then, the World Wide Web had entered the scene, poised to reshape not just electronic communication, but society as a whole. 